Okay, what we have here is pretty much something every 8-track player eventually faces. You pull the tape out and all the tape gets sucked into the machine because the splice broke. Um, you can fix these, of course, and there is a way that you can try to do it without having to cut the tape. Um, another reason why you may have to unravel this tape is because here you get a section of tape that's raised and this cannot pull out because it blocks the raised tape blocks it. So what you need to do in that case, uh, and incidentally any problem involving the tape itself will require you to will require you to open the shell. There's really no uh, getting around that. You're going to have to open up the shell. So let's say for instance the tape is still intact and it's raised up. What you will need to do is you will need to work this around and pull this out. And keep pulling this until you get to the raised section of tape, the offending part. Once you get that done, you will notice now that you've got a loose hub on the inside, right, like this. And uh, I have, I'd have a ways to go to do that, but to show how to do that, you just keep pulling it and say, for instance, here was the raised section. Now you can see it's somewhat loose. What you need to do then to balance it so that when you wind the tape up, it's twisted in the right configuration, is you need to start pulling on the outer edge, like so. Just keep pulling the tape, okay, until it's relatively tight, not painfully tight, just about like that, until you hear a couple squeaks, like that. Then, what you will do is you will then wind the tape around the hub, and there's really no other way to do it. You've got to do it like this, and sure, it can come off, but you need to go around and wind it up. And again, this is a scenario where the splice has not broken. And you'll notice, unlike here, the tape will be twisted around because that's the way it's round around the spool. But what you need to do is while you're winding it like this, when you come to the twisted sections, you need to kind of shake them loose like this. You know, take the tape and kind of shake it down the line so that the twists are pulled away from the part where you're winding because you can't wind it while it's twisted. It has to be pretty straight. So you just keep winding and eventually when you get it down to the last few feet of the tape you'll find there's, there's fewer twists and winds in the tape and when you get it down to about a foot you'll actually find that the loop is actually still intact. Okay, and then you just pull it and it's right back where it started. So just make sure while you're winding it that you shake it down. In this situation, though, the, ta the tape did break, so what you need to do is you need to tape this down. Let me check the time on this. Okay, we're still good. Tape a section down like here so that the tape doesn't further unwind itself. And hold the tape so that you've got the shiny side here and the playing side out, and keep it in that position. Very important, because what you're going to try and do is you're going to try and pull this out so that you're going to have one huge loop that goes from the center to the outer edge and just keep pulling it like this. Make sure you keep it so that it's straight. So this end right now is faced such as this. This will be the side that I will tape and I'll put that aside. Now you got to work on the center section and do the same thing with that. And just pull it down, work out the twists like this as I do the shaking technique. Okay. Don't pull too hard because you can break these. All right. Shake it a little bit more. Okay. Shake it again. And sometimes just throw it. I'm going to throw this on the floor. You won't be able to see it, but it gives me a little more uh, room to work with it. Just shake it around like this. Keep it flat. It's still twisted a little bit. Um, shake it around. This one, incidentally, I ironed because uh, it did get crinkled. And in my ironing video, I'll show you how you do that. 
Um, so now, we're working it around. Hopefully I'm getting to the end. So you can see how it starts to turn as I shake it. not very fun but <laughs> okay I'm almost there and uh, let's see just keep pulling it shaking it around see this tape start to turn as I undo it, just shaking it around. Okay. Now, just about there. Now what you see is I have both ends of the tape. Okay. I have this end here and I have the other. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of masking tape and just kind of cover the edge here. Okay, not a big piece. You don't want to stick up too far. And then you take the other end and you do the same. And the only reason you're going to do this is so that you got to pull the tape all the way through to the beginning again um, so that you have a shorter piece of tape coming out from the center hub. You want to have the short end coming out of the center part, not the longer edge. And then what you do is you basically you try to let's see if I can do this so I can show you. You pull it and you just start doing this. Okay, and just keep pulling and you're going to have to go all the way around to the splice. It's going to take a while. Okay, just keep pulling. Let's check our time again. Uh, seven minutes. Okay. And just keep pulling. Now here's where the splice is. See the splice? Now it's going to start its journey through the center of the tape. And you got to go all the way around until it comes out the center. And careful when you wind this, there can be a couple turns. You got to do this a little carefully. Make sure the tape stays down into the center of the hub. And you can see where the splice is. It's easy to identify. That's why you don't want that sticking up too much. And uh, let's see, keep going and going. like this. And uh, can you imagine if you're doing a 90 minute tape? It's not a lot of fun, but it can be done. You just need a lot of patience. You can pull a little tight sometimes. Oop, there's another little twist. You gotta watch that out. Watch out for those things. stand on the tape of course. Let's see, we got about two eight minutes. Hopefully this will go a little faster. Gotta watch that 15 minute limit. And just keep pulling and pulling. Pull it out. Make sure you push this down occasionally in case it rises up. And uh, naturally, make sure your hands are clean. You don't want to get oil on the tape. Now, the tapes that tend to go bad, that break the splice, are the three prong ones, typically the Columbia ones, although this is a chrysalis one, and the RCA ones, the riveted carts. So my advice is when you're playing these things and you've never gone through a program change, please, when it changes programs, pull the tape out right away and check to make sure that the tape didn't splice, didn't break or get pulled in. 
uh, especially if it's one of these types. You can almost guarantee 90% of the time these Columbia TCS-8 with the three prongs will always break. And you can save yourself a lot of trouble in having to do this just by pulling that thing out. I happened to be out of the room when this thing changed programs and it sucked the tape right in. Now we're up to about 10 minutes. Uh, it's not a lot of fun. Push it down again, it's raised. And another thing you should never do, never play a tape upside down like this or even tilt it over. It'll come off the hub while you're playing and it'll surely get jammed. Always keep the tape playing on the planer half, either at this angle or this angle, but never turn it over while it's playing. It'll come right off the hub in most cases. The top does not have a adequate or even sufficient type of means of, of holding the tape down onto the hub. Alright, we're getting to the center. And you'll see it pull out of the center pretty soon where the splice was. And once I get there, I'm going to basically just do an abbreviated conclusion on this. Let's pull it out, because I know I'm going to run out of time. 11 minutes, okay. Here you see it came out. What you need to do, break the spice off. This is, the, what, this is what you want. You want to have uh, the short section of the tape here. And then what you need to do... get your screwdriver and this is something you probably have done a lot if you haven't worked on these push this down a little bit uh, what are we at uh, 11 minutes still and just start winding it like this take the edge of the screwdriver the jewelers kind of find a little notch to peel it in and just start winding it like this Oop. Make sure you press this down if it starts raising up a little bit. There's another. Just keep winding it up. Yeah. I'm just shaking out some of these twists. And wind and wind and wind. There's another one. Uh, 12 minutes. So here we go, you can see it's coming up a little bit, so push that down. Yeah, make sure you're not standing on it, that doesn't help pull the tape too well. Um, another little section there, wind, work out some of the wrinkles there, wind. Almost there. Yeah, it doesn't help when your shoe's resting on it either. Um, okay, and uh, there you are, and that's it. Then what you need to do is you just need to make sure you got enough. Uh, looseness in the tape so it pulls out. So unravel a couple times and pull this out until it's relatively loose. You don't want it too tight because if it's too tight it won't pull out easy and if it's too loose this thing will get jammed inside the tape because there won't be enough tape to turn this thing around when it goes around. So you can undo this a couple times, loosen this and then as look at my splicing video and splice them together and that's it.